How's it going, people? It's been a long day. It's hot as hell outside. So I thought I'd have me a brewski and a little fun. And this is an important question. Are you a Christian? And that's the Fellowship Track League asking, asking if you really want to know. Because I have, I have a feeling you might think you are and be mistaken. You want to do this right now, don't you? I mean, there's so many ways to get this wrong, apparently. Something like 40,000, I think. Oh. All right, so this is kind of how they format it. They got these, um, they ask a few questions and then they run on and on. Let's see what they got to say. How long have you been a Christian? Gee, I think I was one for uh, 23 years. You may have a time you think of as a reference point for when you became a Christian. You may say, I have been a Christian all of my life. I was born a Christian. Really? How did you become a Christian? You may say, I try to keep the Ten Commandments and do the best I can. Some people say, I became a Christian when I got baptized. Others say I was born into a Christian family. How does someone become a Christian? And that's like the last question they got to ask. The rest is just all run on. So let's get on with it. If someone could become a Christian by being born into a Christian family, by keeping the Ten Commandments, or by being baptized, we need to ask ourselves a very important question. Why then did Jesus have to come to earth and die on the cross? My friend, the Bible has the answer. Yeah, he was arrested for insurrection. <laughs> And all these Christians that love the capital punishment, that's the way he bit it. Capital punishment. Just sick. All right, and there's a, a scattering of fragmentary quotations, and they're expounding upon them. Here's a B side of a verse. It starts off with a fade in, <laughs> and it's uncapitalized. If righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And that's the second portion, the latter portion of Galatians 2.21. Jesus had to suffer and die on the cross. Because none of these things can make us Christians. The Bible states in Ephesians 2. 8 and 9 For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God <laughs> not of works lest any man should boast and we sure couldn't have that People being proud of their accomplishments. What's next? <sighs> yep. Yep, nothing helps you to enjoy life like groveling all the time. <laughs> Trying to walk a straight, narrow path. It's so easy. Just treat people right. <sighs> Work is something man can do. 
Being baptized is a work. Yeah, just get dumped. God said salvation is not of works. So being baptized cannot make anyone a Christian, but it'll make you wet. <laughs> and this philosophy is all wet. <laughs> Eli, the high priest, had sons that God called the sons of Belial, or the sons of the devil. Adam and Eve admitted that they were sinners and placed their faith in God once it was finally explained to them after they had the ability to know shit. <laughs> the ability to know right and wrong is like, oh. Okay. They had two sons. Unto their family, Cain and Abel. That's news to me. Wow. Cain was rejected by God. This shows us that just being born into a family, even the very first family, that believes in God is not enough. You know, what is this bit about where Adam names Eve woman and says... Therefore, a man will leave his mother and father. And... How would he know what that is? Just saying. All right. The Bible also says in Galatians 3.11, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, so we can see that no one can become a Christian by keeping the Ten Commandments. We know that no one has ever been born a Christian through a physical birth, not even JC, because Jesus said in John 3.3, 3, that makes it a fact. Somebody wrote down that Jesus said something. It would have been nice if he'd have written some, written some things down himself. I mean, he wrote something down in the dirt. So, in a questionable passage of John. Nice story, though. All right. We know that... Uh, oh, yeah, John 3.3. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Our response should be like the Philippian jailer. What must I do to be saved? He's been sold. <laughs> Jesus said in Mark 1.15, and they even cut off what he, somebody, this is a fade in, a portion of the gospel, a portion of a verse, uh, repent ye and believe the gospel, and that's all they allowed him to say there. Uh, the gospel can be explained like this, because Because we are all children of Adam, not the atom, but Adam, you know, yeah, we are all sinners because he fucked up. Wherefore, as by one man, Adam, Sin entered into the world. <clears throat> there it is. All right. And death by sin. And so death passed upon, passed upon all men, 
for that all have sinned. We all have got an expiration date. We just don't know what it is. Oh, and that, that was all Romans 5.12. Whether we like it or not, we are separated from a, from a holy God because of our sin. Whoever he might be, or it might be. In Romans 5, 8, God says, but God, God said this about himself, that he said something. God said that he said something. Okay, I guess that's possible. <laughs> In Romans 5, 8, God says, but God commandeth his love towards us. In that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Blood atonement, pagan hoodoo. Uh, abracadabra, yeah, religitard shit. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Uh, Jesus paid the price for our sins. He sh he died and shed his blood in our place. Yeah, that just makes so much fucking sense. Yeah. God says, if we will admit that we are sinners, believe that Jesus paid for our sins with his own blood. What's this shit about blood? I mean, I read the Bible. It's all about blood. It's a bloody good read. It's a bloody, bloody good read. <laughs> I think I might read it on video someday soon. <sighs> and Receive him by faith. He will give us eternal life. <sighs> kind of reminds me of that trick they play with donkeys, you know. They suspend a, a carrot from a little twig hanging just out of reach. So they keep going to get that carrot. And if they drop dead, blessed are they. At least they died trying to get that carrot. <laughs> but they'll never get. In this case, there's not even a carrot. Romans 10, 9, 10 states that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I've witnessed that in church. <laughs> I've witnessed in church. <laughs> Everybody loves to talk about how horrible their life was until they found Jeebus. You know, I used to work as a rent-a-cop, and I remember that I was in this, looking at this one office desk, and there's this picture of a this cute little four-year-old girl on this desk, and there's this drawing she did, and she wrote, wrote on it, Jesus believed in me when no one else would. And I'm thinking... You're like a little kid, you know? Nobody believes in you? Sorry, I digress. Yeah, that just stuck with me. <laughs> it was cute and sad. All right. Yeah, with the heart you believe, it totally bypasses the rationale. Come on, think about it. Talking snakes, talking donkeys. 
magical trees with magical fruit. Um, yeah, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I said that all before, didn't I? Will you agree with God that you need to be saved and receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior right now? And if you call right now, we'll throw in this pencil sharpener or some other shit. I don't know. Potato peeler. <laughs> It'll be magically good. <laughs> right now. And of course they want you to join them. If you will pray something like this, dear God, I confess to you that I am a sinner and that I deserve to die and go to hell forever to pay for my sins. Damn, this is like a contract if you sign that. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that Jesus died and shed his blood on the cross in my place. Because it's so archetypically pagan. <laughs> it goes back to the grain king, you know. <laughs> I now receive Jesus as my personal savior. You know, that always cracks me up. Personal. I guess he's like Dr. Manhattan, you know, <laughs> in The Watchmen. <sighs> yeah, he could be everywhere at once. I know. Receive Jesus as my personal Savior and ask you to forgive me <laughs> of all my sins and give me eternal life in Jesus' name. Amen. Whew. Uh, if you have decided to trust Jesus as your Savior after reading this track, please write and let us know. Ooh, I, if I sent this in, it'd be mail fraud, wouldn't it? <laughs> it was the Fellowship Track League. I love these people. And I think I got more of this stuff. I'm going to get back to the DNC, but I'm just having some fun here. So let me know if you learned something, because I totally forgot what this... <laughs> Jesus. What an abortion. Peace the fuck out. And have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. And <laughs> think about it. Bye. Thank you.